Hello, uh, everyone. Uh, sorry I haven't uploaded in a while. If you're wondering where I was, I was busy doing things. But uh, anyways, uh, let's, let's just, without uh, no delay, let's get on to this. Now, recently, a couple days ago, Weapons and Stuff 93, Upload a video on his Czechoslovakian gas mask that he bought. And I thought, well, he's the one that made me start collecting gas masks. His content is great. I recommend you guys go check him out. His content is, like, great. It's, it's well, it's got a lot of detail into it, a lot of thought, a lot of planning. And if you guys like deactivated guns, he does, uh, some, uh, I think a while ago he'd done a deactivated uh, gun collection video. And, uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, check him out. Uh, show him some support. So, like and subscribe to him. He's amazing. And he's the main reason why I started doing gas mask collecting. But then, but uh, anyways, as I was saying, I saw his video reviewing his Czechoslovakian gas mask. I thought, I've only reviewed one gas mask on my channel. So, I bought, cracked out the Czechoslovakian one. So, let's uh, show it, shall we? So, this mask is made in Kima. Uh, Kima, right there. Comes with the original uh, strap as well. Now, I, I didn't buy mine off of a website. And I bought mine off uh, somewhere else is pretty good so uh, yeah I hope I'm saying the name correctly of the company so uh, yeah these canisters are very similar to the L702's canister except instead of a lid where you pick it up and it just you've got a German style of uh, lid let me actually go and show off the German gas mask canister. There's your check. There's your German. As you can see there, not the same in heights. The Czech one beats it in every single way, uh, but the German one, however, beats it in straps but these straps are really nice so more or less open them so the German one you have like a, a, a hook more like a triangle piece and then it goes into a square square underneath and it's your spring what you just do is just pull down on this piece of fabric or you pull down on this open it you just simply just push it down and pull it forwards making sure that the catch has been released with the check one you can just do a simple swift flick open <laughs> very nice uh, same with the German one except mine's a little bit stiff this is also an original German uh, gas mask canister that I restored. Unfortunately, uh, the dates someone did spray paint it, so there's no dates on the inside. Someone spray painted it in like a strange color that didn't even look like it was like a it was like a red color. 
So I restored it back into its original uh, condition, even as the uh, the D marking. Of course, all these straps are reproductions as well. Pretty much the whole canister is original. Uh, of course, on the check one. Let me do the German one first. Uh, let's see here. On the German canister, you have a metal inside. You would have a spring normally. And this is for spare lenses. Because if the old lenses uh, like crack in the field or something else. But uh, let's check out the check mask. <laughs> So of course, on the check mask, you have a piece of paper on the top of the lid, on the top of the canister pretty much. If anyone speaks Czech, please let me know what this is or what this says. So I have no idea what it says, because I don't speak Czech. Uh, NA1005 And there's a free right there. Of course I don't really understand most of this stuff anyways. Uh, there's also another stamp on the canister. We'll go right there. Kima, once again. But pretty much, everything on this canister should match to the, uh, to the mask. But of course, as you can see on the inside, the paint is like new. Hasn't been touched for ages. We're going to bring the mask on over there. And I'll go. Ooh. I'll explain what that sound was in a minute. Sorry, this is a bit of a power struggle. The pro oh god. That pretty much is everything from the canister. Let's we go and do the mask first. This is what you would expect from a Czechoslovakian mask. Mine's in decent condition. It's okay condition, I would say. Of course the mask being crushed from the canister. Just like uh, weapons and stuff, uh, one that has a funny eye lens, mine's still in uh, good shape, see the light reflecting, reflecting off of it. I am filming with the curtains drawn, reason being is because I don't want this piece of history missing hit. Uh, pretty much it has these Bakelite buckles, Bakelite or metal. There is a nice stamp there. Stamp's kind of fading away. We have another stamp. Here, C H S 
12.ix1938 CHM1 and this oh, this mask kind of reminds me of a British mask in a way uh, what happened here was that the rubber deteriorated there you can see it still some there no longer there so that's what's holding the Miss Baker like furniture in place also just like what uh, weapons and stuff talks about on the French or the Belgian gas mask from the Cold War era this has dried up so I'll be very careful with that but I'll actually go and pull out a British mask just to show you the difference And I'll also go ahead and get, grab a mannequin head just so I can prop up the mask without it uh, fully without me needing to hold two masks so that I can just hold the one with the check mask. Sorry for me having to do this. Here is, I could just cut the vid I could just cut the camera, but I can't be bothered right now. Seeing how I've nearly got the mask on his face. There we go. Okay, so I've now got the Mark IV general service respirator on his uh, face. make sure that he balances. No, he does not. So let me see if uh, putting this helmet on his head will help anything. There we go. I'm going to move the check mask over there. I was actually going to bring in the German. Oh Christ. And yes, this is being filmed on a jerry cam. Because I can't find anything else to film on. Okay. able to do it. I'll go and just move the canister out the way. Check mask. <clears throat> but right there is your Mark IV general general service respirator from World War II. Grab the brick as the check one. As you can see there is Quite some similarities with the voice diaphragm and the lenses. But, uh, yeah. We've got to take the sack. Oh. It's because I grabbed the helmet instead of the whole head. So there we go.
which uh, at some point I will be doing all of my uh, reviewing, showing all my gas masks off one by one. Now I've popped it back, I'm going to bring back in the check mask, the check canister, and the mask. So what some people don't understand is that uh, some people will just forget that these masks even existed and will just sell them without knowing what it is. But, um, I think I will say where I got uh, the mask from and the canister. I've got mine from the famous antique uh, place known as Basil's Bridge, based in the UK, for a very good price, which is better than what I've seen on eBay. For eBay, these things cost around like 60 quid, 60, 90, 160 pounds. It's really depending on the condition though. But I remember I paid like 30 or 40 pound for all of this. And it's in good nick. Anyways, uh, let's move on. Allow me to move on to the filter. So the filter's got this nice colour on the outside. That's right, still got the original seal on. And another Kima. Another stamp, which makes me think that this mask was probably not used at all during the Second World War. Probably issued to a Czech soldier, and then when the invasion of Czechoslovakia by the Nazi Germany happened, it was probably put in storage. But uh, yeah, it's a very nice one. Unfortunately, nothing is matching. Besides from Dash 38. Let me actually show the... Pretty much that's your screw thread right there. Very nice. Still got the old the original red paint. Mine still has the valve on. Here's look at the cap, it's just nothing but a simple cap. These have the same threads as a uh, French uh Véron gas mask. Which I will actually pull out from the cabinet. So here is wait, hold on. So here it is, my French Veil gas mask. It's very similar to the Czech one. 
but the filter is almost identical. It's got the same uh, screw threads and everything. Of course, mine is missing both the lenses. So flat like that, so it's possibly crushed by a tank or something. And mine still has the uh, this, which is very nice. Well, pretty much the checks kind of more or less did the same thing. With including uh, Bakelite furniture. And here's the French filter. Mine has been opened. Mine's also dated 1938. But if I grab the mask here and see screws in screws in very nicely and so uh, yeah now, some of you've been wondering what is in that fabric. Well, I'll go ahead and show you guys. This is the original Czech fabric, which I quite enjoy. Now, here we got a little packet. And here it contains the original uh, cleaning snuff, supposedly for the lenses, maybe. I know with very few check masks, it's very hard to find. The original cleaning thing. That's a cool little piece that I have. But, uh, yeah. That's my mask. Uh, just for the sake of it, I'll actually go ahead and pop the mask on and show you uh, how it looks if he was a Czech soldier. So just like in weapons and stuff video, they have a really nice uh, neck harness, which I can agree with. The Czechs were very ahead of their call. Here it is, and the check mask looks like. It's a very strange uh, mask indeed. Uh, it's got no tissue, sy tissue system, like a GP5, but... The reason why I'm doing breathing very lightly is because of the... Uh, this... Oh god. <coughs> oh Christ. Oh. And now I've got to fiddle around with this. Okay, well that will do. But pretty much, if you remember from the start of the video of me, pretty much whenever you, you open up one of these canisters, you can still smell what it was like. Wait, you can smell the... What is it? I don't know how to describe it. You can smell like old Czechoslovakian factories. <coughs> I just don't know why. But uh, yeah, that's been my review of the Czech Kima uh, gas mask from World War II. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching.